welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm back with my September wrap-up. I finished seven things, and five of them were manga, so we're just going to jump in with those. I finished volumes 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 of Komi Can't Communicate. This is a contemporary manga where the main character has a communication disorder and has the goal to make a hundred friends. And it's just going through high school as she is trying to do that. I think at this point she has made 44? Yeah, so 66 more to go is what I remember they said. I'm just bad with math. It's a very sweet manga, very much about friendships and like the variety of friendships. We get a little bit of more movement on the kind of romance subplot because Komi has a crush on somebody, which is very obvious from the beginning, but we actually see her more moving or trying to let that person know. It's very cute. But the first thing I finished in the month of September was the short story anthology New Adventures in Space Opera by, or edited by Jonathan Strahan. And this is published by Tachyon. I was very excited because it's like New Adventures in Space Opera. Okay, and then I'm reading these. And it's, a lot of it is well-known. No, all of the authors in this collection are well-known names. And I'm like, it came out in 2024. Perfect, I can, you know, nominate these stories for the Hugos. And then when I was, somebody made a comment on the spreadsheet and it's like, I think this is actually published earlier. Come to find out, all the short stories in this collection have been published previously. And then based off of the editorial note in the beginning, I was kind of disappointed about that. Because they go into the history of how space opera has changed, how space opera tends to be very much a commentary on social issues and political issues. Space opera is changing for the future. And so I expected things to be more recent. And I think the most recent short story was published in 2023. And then the oldest was, I think, 2012. I pretty much loved all of the short stories in this collection. And I actually do want a copy of this for myself because there are several that I, I know I want to go back and revisit. I kind of wish that we had had some short stories that were actually cultivated for this anthology that were new that pushed the boundaries and not just reprints that the editor had found or had worked with people to go oh hey I really liked how that pushed the boundaries that belongs in this again really enjoyed it if you like space opera you'll love this but I get like I said there's some very big names fun stories that fit into universes that have finished or are ongoing and then just some ones that are completely new but for the premise of brand new pushing the envelope I don't think you do that when it's a reprint it's kind of mixed feelings on this one and then the other book that I finished was Finding Junie Kim by Ellen O. this is a middle grade where the author has actually taken a lot of personal family history to populate it it is fiction but you can definitely tell the research that's gone into it. It starts off in the contemporary, but it does have historical elements as well. And there are definitely, because this is a middle grade and of the time it was published, there are no content warnings. So I would definitely look for those ahead of time because there are some things that might trigger people, such as bullying and racism, um, but also dealing with war trauma and just talking about how that affects things. We are following Junie Kim, who is starting seventh grade, and her brother's just gone to high school, so he's not really there to protect her anymore from her bully. On the first day of school, they go and find out that somebody has vandalized the gym and written a whole bunch of racist comments, which has only been like inflaming other racism that the character, main character and her friends have been receiving from other students whether microaggressions or just outright racism. And Junie's having a hard time with this. She has a disagreement with her friends on how to handle the issue, which gives them a falling out for a time period. 
that brings for some bigger issues in her life that she had been ignoring. She also has a school project to interview somebody basically her grandparents' age or older, and she decides to interview her grandfather and later interviews her grandmother as well. So that's where you get the Korean history because both of her grandparents were kids at the start of the Korean War, as Americans know it. (laughs) Something I love about this is even though we're talking about heavy topics, and like I said, there are definitely trauma triggers in this book, Junie does have a very supportive friendship group, and her family is insanely supportive, even that older brother. And if you have a sibling, you know, they're not always the nicest, but this really is a a tight-knit, close family. And I love that Eleanor, even with dealing with topics that are very heavy, is able to tie in joy that can come along with just living life. This is definitely something that I think all middle schoolers and all adults should read. But definitely your middle schooler needs to be a little more mature, and that's up to the parents to figure out. But that is my wrap-up. So I'd love to find out what you guys were reading in September. Please let me know down below, and have a great day. Bye.